So uh, can you say your name and uh, what kind of work you do and where? Sure. My name is Yaya Raiz. I live in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, I do a variety of work. I work with the LGBTQ migrant community. Um, I also uh, work with the overall migrant community. And it's really sad that I have to divide those two. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that a lot of times um, in the migrant rights movement, as well as many movements in the United States, social movements, uh, LGBTQ issues are not put at the forefront. And I think that LGBTQ people, two-spirited people, are uh, definitely uh, more on the margins than, than a lot of other people. Um, so yeah. mm -hmm. And how do uh, how are LGBTQ uh, and two-spirit folks affected <laughs> or, or in the prison system uh, in Arizona? And detention system. Um, that's a really good question, and I think it's a question that not not a, not a lot of people examine. Uh, specifically, um, there's LGBTQ people, two spirit people in prisons and in detention centers, which, to be honest, is the same system, part of the military industrial complex, part of the prison industrial complex, um, and now the detention industrial complex. They're really working all under um, a system that uh, really criminalizes people unjustly. So within those systems, um, I know that for a fact, uh, people who are transgender, they're not able to get their hormones, they're not able to get their pills um, or uh, whatever they might need to be able to support their identity. Uh, they're not respect, their gender identity is not respected and so they're put in very vulnerable and dangerous situations. A lot of trans women, for example, are disproportionately abused um, in, in those systems in the prisons and detention centers um, and 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 it's really sad because a lot of people who um, have AIDS or are HIV positive also uh, don't get to um, have their uh, whether they be uh, queer or not um, don't get to have uh, their medication which is something that they need to live uh, so so that's one thing that I notice um, that you know it's it's really hard to to divide one issue from the other because the you know racism and uh, capitalism just really seeps into all of our lives in all of these different ways but particularly for a LGBTQ two-spirit people in detention centers and prisons those are things that they go through is there uh, anyone in particular uh, maybe a trans woman you've worked with or other folks you've worked with uh, that you think whose story you think exemplifies the injustices of uh, queer people in uh, detention? Mm -hmm. um, there's been a few cases that have been documented and I think not enough cases uh, and sometimes I don't like to give specific names because then that just means that that one person but sometimes it's good to give specific names because then you you're able to at least have a face um, uh, but anyway you're are you going to edit this? Yeah I can edit okay. that part yeah. Yeah because um, the person's name, I believe her name is Alejandra Trujillo, but I'm not 100%, so, so yeah. you can, you know. But um, this, this young woman, uh, trans woman, uh, was detained, and this was a few years back, and uh, was not getting her medication, and uh, had been getting sick a lot, um, and she was HIV positive, had been getting sick a lot, and pretty much ended up dying at the hands of ICE. Nobody heard her and it was it was really cool because um, a lot of the the men who were in the cell with her and in, in the area with her uh, just had a lot of empathy and, ha and and were trying to support her because they saw like how much pain she was in and how much she was deteriorating so quickly and um, I, I read an article where uh, they they stood they, they held the cells and they stood their ground and they chanted hospital, hospital, hospital um, until finally she was taken but by then it was too late uh, by, by then it was too late How can uh, media whether it's cell phones or video or blogs or anything uh, help women like Alejandra or others? Um, I think that uh, media is incredibly powerful, um, especially uh, when we think about really, you know, popular people and that that are just, you know, at, at least in our world that you know we, we hear, for example, Mumia Abu Jamal. He's been, you know, unjustly imprisoned for almost 30 years, um, and. 
uh, he does radio and he's able to transmit his stories and his beliefs and his ideas which are really ideas that talk about freedom and talk about um, strategies that we need to be you know taking and, and using and so um, I believe that we need to empower people within prison to make media because those are the people that need to tell their stories. So, um, and the people that are outside of, of those systems, uh, we need to be able to, to support that. Um, to support that, whether we go in there and do writing workshops um, and, and then do digital stories with them or do radio in that way. Uh, that's a lot of the ways in which I've been able to learn about prison issues, aside from working inside of the prisons and listening personally to people's stories, as well as having had family these being family members be in detention centers and in prison uh, those are ways in which I've, I've learned and so I know that the most powerful way is to really give the tools to the people who are being directly affected affected by it and it's very powerful